anterior hip replacements using Vellus Hip Navigation, an abbreviated technique. The first thing to every successful hip replacement is preoperative templating and assessing for a patient's leg length inequality prior to surgery. The setup, the patient is on an orthopedic HANA table. The C-arm is brought in on the opposite side of the surgeon. Surgery begins. The surgeon does the exposure and is ready for the femoral neck cut. The C-arm is brought into position 10 degrees over and with the leg internally rotated 10 degrees. This is done to maximize the patient's femoral offset. I then mark my planned neck cut with a bovi tip. I will then compare this to my templated neck cut. Then, the image is fine-tuned to obtain a perfect image of the proximal femur with the head centered on the image to prevent parallax. This image must include the pubic symphysis and the greater trochanter. This image will later be used for the one trial analysis. At this point, the representative will mark the relevant points on the joint point monitor while the surgery continues. First, they mark the greater trochanter. Then, a circle is drawn around the femoral head. You then align the femoral axis tool in the canal. Next, you mark the pelvic reference line. And lastly, you mark the teardrop. After reaming and the acetabular cup has been selected, I place the cup into the acetabulum with the concise attached. I put the cup into what I think is the appropriate anaversion and inclination angles. A level pelvis is then obtained. The C-arm is brought back to a neutral position to obtain this image. I then verify that the pelvis is neutral by ensuring that the pubic symphysis is aligned with the coccyx. This image is then used as the neutral reference point for placement of the cup. I then bring the C-arm with the same position over top of the center of the acetabulum. I analyze the cup position using the software and the cup is inserted with your desired antiversion and inclination angles. Impact the cup into its final position and remove the impactor handle. Analyze the final position. The final liner can then be impacted using the concise impactor. The surgery continues and the femur is exposed. The proximal femoral releases are performed and the femur is broached using the concise impactor. The trial stem is then reduced with the trial neck, standard or high, with the templated head. The C-arm is then brought back into position 10 degrees over with the leg 10 degrees internally rotated. The goal of this is to reproduce the original proximal femoral image used prior to the neck cut for the one trial analysis. You then remark the greater trochanter on the image enter the component trial sizes, and you place a circle around the acetabulum. Mark the shoulder, mark the pelvic reference line, mark the teardrop, rotate the template to match the cup, align the femoral template to the canal, align the femurs, then confirm using an overlay. Then verify point registration with the surgeon. The one trial analysis gives the surgeon the option of leg length and offset based upon implant modularity relative to the patient's anatomy. I then check the leg for instability by externally rotating the leg to 70 degrees and bring the leg down to the floor. If the hip is stable, it will not come out anteriorly. The final implant can then be impacted and the final reduction is performed. At this point in time, the surgeon can choose to use the one trial analysis again to assess leg length and offset. I use this early in my practice. However, at this point, I find it no longer necessary given the accuracy of the software. In my experience, the implant tends to sit up one to two millimeters more than the trial components. This is because of how the collar rests in the calcar. I therefore anticipate this addition when analyzing the data with the one trial analysis. With the final construct, as predicted, the patient's leg length was five millimeters long, plus one millimeters of femoral offset and minus one millimeter of total offset. This reproduced the desired anatomy as planned prior to surgery. After surgery, final x-rays are taken, demonstrating the accuracy of the software. The use of Velos hip navigation has made the surgery more accurate and has shortened my surgical workflow.